how temperature determines sex in alligators some reptiles such as crocodilians and some turtles are known to display temperature dependent sex determination tsd where the ambient temperature of the developing eggs determines the individual sex for example in the american alligators eggs incubation at 33c produces mostly males while incubation at 30c produces mostly females an international joint research team between Japan and the U.S. have determined that the thermosensor protein TRPV4 is associated with TSD in the American alligator. The research has been published in scientific reports. The research team headed by Professor Taizan Aguchi of the National Institute for Basic Biology, Okazaki Institute for Integrative Bioscience, and PhD student Ryohei Yatsu of SOKENDAI, the Graduate University for Advanced Studies, in collaboration with Professor Makoto Tomonaga of the National Institute for Physiological Sciences, Okazaki Institute for Integrative Bioscience, and Professor Louis J. Gillette Jr. and Assistant Professor Satomi Kono of the Medical University of South South Carolina, have investigated the molecular mechanism of how temperature determines sex. In their research using American alligators, they found that a thermosensitive protein called TRPV4 is present within the developing alligator gonad inside the egg. Alligator TRPV4 is responsive to warm temperatures near mid-30s, and can activate cell signaling by inducing calcium ion influx. The current study also demonstrates that by specific pharmacological inhibition of TPRV4 protein function in the developing egg, genes important for male development, for example, genes encoding anti-malarian hormone and SOX9, are influenced, and partial feminization at male producing temperatures have been observed. From these results the authors demonstrate that TRPV4 may significantly influence the male gonadal sex determination pathway at a molecular level during TSD in the alligator. This is the first demonstrated report of a biomolecule associated with regulation of the very unique temperature-dependent sex determination mechanism. PhD student Ryohei Yatsu said, Reptiles can be difficult to study at times, but we were delighted to obtain such an interesting result and elucidate part of the alligator TSD mechanism. We still have much to research, but we are interested in how our results relate with other TSD species diversity and evolution. Professor Taizan Aguchi said, Organisms that have adopted TSD systems may be more susceptible to the risks of environmental change, such as global warming. In future, we would like to know how an unstable environmental factor such as incubation temperature was able to establish itself as a sex determination factor. How trees could save the climate around 0.9 billion hectares of land worldwide would be suitable for reforestation, which could ultimately capture two-thirds of human-made carbon emissions. The Crowther Lab of ETH Zurich has published a study in the journal Science that shows this would be the most effective method to combat climate change. The Crowther Lab at ETH Zurich investigates nature-based solutions to climate change. In their latest study the researchers showed for the first time where in the world new trees could grow and how much carbon they would store. Study lead author and postdoc at the Crowther Lab Jean-Francois Bastin explains, One aspect was of particular importance to us as we did the calculations, we excluded cities or agricultural areas from the total restoration potential as these areas are needed for human life. Reforest an area the size of the USA. The researchers calculated that under the current climate conditions, Earth's land could support 4.4 billion hectares of continuous tree cover. That is 1.6 billion more than the currently existing 2.8 billion hectares. Of these 1.6 billion hectares, 0.9 billion hectares fulfill the criterion of not being used by humans. This means that there is currently an area of the size of the U.S. available for tree restoration. Once mature, these new forests could store 205 billion tons of carbon, about two-thirds of the 300 billion tons of carbon that has been released into the atmosphere as a result of human activity since the Industrial Revolution. According to Professor Thomas Crowther, co-author of the study and founder of the Crowther Lab at ETH Zurich, we all knew that restoring forests could play a part in tackling climate change, but we didn't really know how big the impact would be. Our study shows clearly that forest restoration is the best climate change solution available today. But we must act quickly, as new forests will take decades to mature and achieve their full potential as a source of natural carbon storage. Russia best suited for reforestation. 
The study also shows which parts of the world are most suited to forest restoration. The greatest potential can be found in just six countries, Russia 151 million hectares, the US 103 million hectares, Canada 78.4 million hectares, Australia 58 million hectares, Brazil 49.7 million hectares, and China 40.2 million hectares. Many current climate models are wrong in expecting climate change to increase global tree cover, the study warns. It finds that there is likely to be an increase in the area of northern boreal forests in regions such as Siberia, but tree cover there averages only 30 to 40 percent. These gains would be outweighed by the losses suffered in dense tropical forests, which typically have 90 to 100 percent tree cover. Look at trees. A tool on the Crowther Lab website, https colon slash slash www.crowtherlab.com slash maps dash two slash closing parenthesis enables users to look at any point on the globe and find out how many trees could grow there and how much carbon they would store. It also offers lists of forest restoration organizations. The Crowther Lab will also be present at this year's Scientifica website available in German only, https colon slash slash www.scientifica.ch slash closing parenthesis to show the new tool to visitors. The Crowther Lab uses nature as a solution to, one, better allocate resources, identifying those regions which, if restored appropriately, could have the biggest climate impact, two, set realistic goals, with measurable targets to maximize the impact of restoration projects, and three, monitor progress, to evaluate whether targets are being achieved over time, and take corrective action if necessary.